Welcome to my channel newbies and welcome back to those who have already seen my past videos. Today, we are going to talk about the present value of 1, its concept and the formula of course, and then we will be applying what we will be learning later in an illustrative problem. And lastly, I will teach you how to use the calculators to get the present value of 1 factor. And with that, let's start. So, what is this present value of 1? So, actually, it is just a factor or number used to get the current value of your receivable or payable. Now, let's get straight to the point. So, let's have an example. So, example, you are to pay 900000 at the end of 3 years. So, the question is, what is the current value or present value of your debt today? Okay? So, you cannot say 900,000 because logically, we know that money grows, right? And if your liability is 900,000 at the end of 3 years in the future, then that means today, your liability should be smaller, right? So, how do we compute the present value of your debt today? So, before we do that, actually... We need another given aside from your future payment here and the number of years before becoming due. So, what is it? It's the effective or market rate. So, I will be posting another video discussing the concept of the effective rate or market rate. For now, let's just think of this as the average interest rate that you will normally pay when you borrow money from lenders like bank and other financial institutions and other sources in the market, okay? So, we have here 12%. So, as if in the market, if you borrow money, like for example, you borrowed 100,000, you are not just obliged to pay the principal of 100,000. You are also obliged to pay 12% interest based on the 100,000 per annum or per year. Okay? So, let's go back to the problem. So, since we already have the three needed details here in this sample problem, the future payment is here. It's 900,000. The second is we have the number of periods already, which is three years. And the third one is the effective interest rate of 12%. So, since we have that, then it's time to solve. So, actually, I'm going to teach you two techniques in this video. So, the first one is the timeline analysis technique. And the second one is already using the present value of one factor. So, in the timeline, you start by drawing this. And you need to divide the line to three years because again, in the example, your debt will be due in three years. So now, the question mark here is the amount that we are trying to find out. And even if we don't know this amount yet, we know that this amount will grow by 12%. So we need to multiply it with 1.12 or 112%. So the 12% is for the interest and the 100% is for the principal amount borrowed. So this question mark. So it will grow at the end of the first year. So times 1.12 for the first time. And then it will grow again at the end of the second year. So times 1.12 again. And it will grow for the last year at the end of the third year. So times 1.12 until it becomes 900,000. Right? So... What do we do? So, if you have this already, then you just have to work back from here. So, 900,000 divided by 1.12. Instead of multiplying because, again, we are working in reverse. So, the answer will be 803,571, rounded to the nearest whole number. And divide it again by 1.12 until we get here because this is our goal, right? So, we have 717,474. And divide again by 1.12 for the last time. And we will get this amount, 640,602. And that's it. That's your debt today, which is after 3 years, it will become 900,000. Okay? 
The problem with this uh, timeline technique is that what if we are talking about 45 years or even 20 years? If that's the case, then this technique will be very time consuming, right? So here comes the second technique, which is already using the present value of one factor. So the formula is just future payments times present value of one factor. So let's substitute. So 900,000 is the future payments. And to get the present value of one factor, we have the formula 1 plus i raised to the power of negative n, where i is the effective interest per period and the n is the number of periods until maturity. So substituting further, we will have 900,000 times 1.12 raised to the power of negative 3. And then you will get the factor 0 0.71178, which is already rounded off to the nearest five decimal places. So you just need to multiply these two and you will get 640,602, which is the same with here. So that's the concept of the present value of one factor and its application. So now let's answer the final question which is how to use the calculators to get the present value of one factor. So let's start with this scientific calculator. So it will be very easy if you're using the scientific calculator since you just have to type 1.12 raised to negative 3. So this is the symbol for the raised to the power here in the scientific calculator. And if you don't know that yet, then get your scientific calculators and try typing all of this. And after you have typed all of that, press the equals button and you will get this. So actually, this is the present value of one factor if you are not going to round it off to the nearest five decimal places. So that's it for scientific calculator. But what if you only have basic calculator, just like this one? So don't worry because you can still get the present value factor in this basic calculator. And here's how you do it. Step 1. Type in 1.12. So this is done to enter the 1 plus interest rate in the calculator. Step 2. Press the divide button twice. So you will notice that even after doing that, there will be no changes or difference in the display of the basic calculator. But why do we do that? We do that to let the calculator know that we are computing for the present value. Okay? So now, let's go to the last step, which is press the equals button three times. Because in our example, we have three years or three periods. So simply stated, we are doing this last step to enter the N or the number of periods. And that's it. But... But I forgot something. Actually, guys, this is what will happen in the basic calculator screen if you press the equals button once. And if you press it twice, then you will get this. Okay? And finally, if you press it for the third time, then you will get the present value factor that we needed for our example already. So, that's it for this video. And if you learned... Please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos. And thank you for watching.